Why are we expecting to see today here this great event? I am expecting to see good games, exciting games, some people that I know and maybe I'm expecting to meet new people and make new friends. Well, as promised, we have celebrities in our VIP table. How are you today? How are you? Very good, thank you. Do you remember the first time I interviewed you at the Dream Hotel? I do remember. What was that event about the little girl? The was little, it? Yeah, the little girl, the beauty pageant. Yeah, beauty pageant, beautiful. Beauty, beauty. So since that day up to today, I heard that you got your own show. I that was after shows. that? That was after that, right? I had two. I had the big game show, the Miami Monkey show. I'm still on, presently on Bob Wives. And I have my own one, and soon to have a cookbook. Good. A lot of work, a lot of work. Which one of the two shows you prefer, the Big End show or the other one? I liked all of them. <laughs> you have fun in all of them. Yes. That's good, that's good. Polo today, what, what in, uh, inspired you to come woman. to... Pretty Woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty, <laughs> pretty Woman time. Mob Wives. The Mob Wives. What about Big End show? What's it? What happened? How many seasons? Only one. Only one? And that's it? But you were the star. I know. You I are the star. I want it back. <laughs> Tell them. I want it back. Give me back, back my. I want my show back. Yeah. Give uh, her back her show. Big Edge. What was the best experience on Big Edge show? When my girlfriend fell out of the hot tub and got 40 stitches. So what's going on with the mock one? We're filming now, yeah. presently, in early December. And is that everything that shows there is real or 90%, 50%? It's very real. So a lot of background, your history, you yeah, have to open up. Real. You have to open up all your background and history, you know? Okay. Gotta do what you gotta do, right? Gotta make the open, money. Open book. Go. Open. We're gonna see. Do you know how many horses play in the polo match? No. You see, it's very hard to find out who knows how many horses are playing in the polo match. But we'll find out later on with one of the polo organizers. At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight Once again to the Aladino show. Today is a very special event, the Victory Cup here in Patterson, New York. And we're gonna have sitting big personalities next to me because we're gonna interview them to find out what do they know about polo. You keep watching on Aladino show and today we're gonna watch polo game. Somebody told me that you know how many horses are in a polo match. Yes, they, they lied. <laughs> how many are there? I'm honestly not sure. <laughs> <laughs> they, they definitely lied. Whoever told you that, I'd like to know their name. Martin Ball. Yes. Customer Bank. Yes. You had an event coming up. Please tell me about that important event. It's very important. Yes, definitely. Um, we have the March of Dimes event coming up, Signature Chefs, on Wednesday, September 17th. That'll be at the Westchester Country Club. Um, we have 25 celebrity chefs from all over the area cooking that evening and uh, different wine, beer, everything taken care of, and it's uh, to raise money for the March of Dimes, you know, to end premature births. How, how you get involved in to well, do those the, types of the March of Dimes uh, was something I've been involved with for about seven or 10 years. Um, personally, just got involved through my work at my previous bank. And my wife and myself had twins that were born premature. My wife was actually in the hospital at 35 weeks, uh, at uh, 28 weeks, and gave birth to our twins at 35 weeks early. They spent two weeks in the NICU. So the March of Dimes with premature birth as their mission ending that ended up hitting very close to home. So that was an organization that I got very involved with and uh, have been giving my time, money, and talents to. Uh, you know, to give back for what they've been able to do to help my wife and our twins um, 
who are about to turn four this month. So very excited about that, that they're happy and healthy. You're doing a great job. You are helping the organization, which is good. You're doing good deeds. How is the bank business doing? The bank business is doing well. I'm the banking group head for Customers Bank. We're uh, probably the largest small bank you've never heard of. We're $5.6 billion in assets. Uh, we're in the top 3% of banks in all over the country. We operate in the Northeast Corridor, and I run a group here in uh, the New York Marketplace, and it's terrific. We're expanding from D.C. all the way up to Boston and Rhode Island, and New York, we have an office in Manhattan on 99 Park Avenue, and in Westchester and Rybrook. So the banking business is doing terrific, and uh, you know we're always looking for new and exciting clients to uh, work and uh, make dreams reality for our clients. And today at the Victory Cup, you are one of the sponsors for the yes. VIP 10, where we are sitting right yes. now. Yes, yes, we are. <laughs> Thanks to Martin Ball, yes. right here, we're sitting under the tent. Yes, my cousin Greg Ball, you know Senator Greg Ball, um, wanted to look for partnerships. Customers Bank, we don't do any advertising; we do everything by word of mouth. But when we find key partnerships for our type of clientele, we look to uh, you know create bonds. So that's how we teamed up with the Victory Cup to be the VIP sponsor here today, awesome. and uh, support the cause, and you know meet great people, and uh, you know enjoy a great day of polo. Great, great. Okay, so we're gonna find out later on with somebody else how many horses are gonna be running on the field later on. Look forward to it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Martin. A pleasure. Thank you very and much. You keep watching on Aladino Show. You know the woman wants her cowboy Like he wants his rodeo Oh, well, it's buzz and blood It's a dust and mud It's a roar of a Sunday crowd It's the white and knuckles The gold in the buckle He'll win the next go-round It's boots and shabs It's cowboy hats It's spurs and let it go It's the ropes and the rain And the joy and pain And they call the thing a rodeo we found somebody who is going to tell us how many horses are going to be on the field. No. Oh, come on! <laughs> Anthony Rubio designs here at the Polo Victory Club. How are you feeling today? Hot. It's very humid and hot yes. today, but it's a beautiful place. And you're looking good. The Thank dogs you. are looking you know, good. Always trying. The other dog is uh, going around, going for a tour. Socializing. Socializing. <laughs> <laughs> Probably on the red carpet by now. Yeah. You've been very busy. What's the most uh, busiest part uh, uh, so far that you've been doing? A TV show, red carpet? Um, I just yeah. shot a Sizzler for a TV show. I'm doing, I've been attending the New York Fashion Week shows because we're in the middle of New York Fashion yes. Week. I'm presenting a show for Fashion Week Brooklyn next month, first weekend of Brooklyn, of October. And um, I, you know, I'm always busy attending fundraisers like this and everything. Which are the, the, the biggest celebrity has called you and said, I need you to dress my dog? Oh, well, I've worked for, with um, Sidney Lauper. Um, I've um, I went into a lot of them, and, and, and lately, most of my clients come from Europe. Believe it or not. So from getting, Europe? Europe. I'm getting from Spain. You 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 were on a Europe TV show too, right? I, yeah, I was uh, filmed for reality a documentary. In, the documentary? In, in, oh, okay. Belgium. And Belgium. Yeah, name, exactly. Uh, the name got out there, and everybody started contacting yeah. me. And, and everybody in New York knows Anthony <laughs> Rubio. The science. Anthony Rubio has been in the Aladino show since. Many years yes. ago, <laughs> never best. gonna get tired of interviewing Anthony no. Rubio. Always looking good with a new tie. Do you yeah. design those ties? These are my ties. It's a naughty tie because it's made of materials that they use for women's negligees, uh -huh. which has got a little bit of a sinful touch to it. And it's funny because the people who are t always are alert to them are the women. They always come to me and ask me about the ties. So wow. I guess they recognize the material. Yes, yes. I know that life looks very beautiful. You know, busy here, there, promoting your brand, your name out there newspapers, media, everything. But always life is not that easy. It is no. always a hard part of life. There's a lot of parts in life that are pretty hard. I just recently lost my mother. Uh, Sorry to hear that. Ago. Thank you. And um, that was a big, uh, one of the most painful experiences in my life. But my mom was also my biggest advocate and she always a big fan. So if I had to think that what would my mother want me to be doing and she wouldn't want me to be uh, depressed or sad or Absolutely. slowed down. She was always about energy, so she would want me to be where I'm at right Absolutely. now. Absolutely, and it's a good advice for people who lost their, their, yeah. their loved ones to keep going, to keep fighting for right. their dreams. Right, right. And, and keep doing it in order to be, to, to reach to, the goal. To, to heal and reach goals. Exactly. Yeah, you heal that way, and um, like I said, we have enough time to be sorrowful, but I, I prefer to be happy and spread joy. 
Yes. Introduce the dogs for us. Okay, this is Bogey and this is Kimba. He's named after Humphrey Bogart and he's named after Kimba the White Lion, a cartoon character I used to watch when I was a kid. What are they dressing? What are they wearing? These are my designs. This uh -huh. is a nude illusion. It's um, for hot days. You can see it's netting. Oh, so nice. they're not uncomfortable and it's stretchy so it moves with them. And it's all couture and handmade by me. Any particular age because of the hats? 1600, 1700, nothing? No, no. This is, um, they're just top hats. Just top hats. Yeah. Nice, great, beautiful. Finally, we are here with the person who's going to tell us how many horses are going to be playing on the field. You know, we got three against three today. A lot of times when you go to a polo match, as everybody, well, as some of us know, right, it's a 10-acre field. And here you have a 10-acre field, and you're looking out there, and the horses are about this big, you know, and then they zoom by and go back and forth. So what we did here is we built an exhibitional field uh, that's uh, about 300 by 150. So you can actually see the horses and interact. I played arena polo. I grew up on a, on, a, on a small farm. And to me, it's about the players. It's about the horses. You know, the players themselves, it's a very dangerous sport. They're amazing athletes. But those horses are amazing athletes. And it's a tough sport. So if you, and if you look at the crowd today, how close that they are to, to actually what's going on, if this were at a 10-acre field, you wouldn't even see really what's going on until, you know, right at the moment. So that's what this is all about. That's great. So. The horses, what age do they have to be in order to qualify to play polo? You know, most of the horses, and, 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 and this goes for a lot of the work horses, can be three, you know, four years of age, five years of age when, when they begin to get into their prime. And of course, there are horses that, that are a little bit older. I know that I actually learned how to play arena polo on a one horse, uh, on a one eyed uh, gelding who was about 15, 14 years old, but that horse had a hell of a lot of power and was an awful lot of fun and, and didn't didn't really, you know, train one eye over the other, favor one over the other. It was an amazing horse. I had the chance to interview Debbie Nash that came from Virginia, one of the yeah, players. Yeah. She told me that... Oh, Debbie, sure. Yeah, Debbie, yeah. She yeah. told me that sometimes they came they, from all, all over the cities, they use somebody else's horse yeah. on the spot. So yeah. sometimes well, what, the horses what, what, are... A lot of times that's, that's the you know, benefit of being a member of a club and having, you know, having those relationships. But a lot of players show up. Now some, maybe at a very high end, you can actually have your own horses, ship them around, you know, ship them around the world. Mm -hmm. um, but every trucker that you play, every event you play, you're going to be on several horses because it is such an intense sport, not only for the players, but you know, for, for those horses. There's a saying that they say that every you know hundred hours that you spend on a on a on a polo pony playing polo, one hour you're going to be in, in the hospital. And, and every year we lose polo players to to you know to succumb because of the dangers of, of this this sport. So uh, you know these guys uh, are actually riding. Some of them are met these horses for the first time today, which also adds a little bit you know to the dynamic. Getting on a horse that you don't even know. What gear, you know, how exactly, far can you go, yeah. and, and what are its right works. The right. What's the lifetime of the horse uh, that plays oh, geez. I, mean, I think that, uh, you know, I've been there, I know there have been a lot of talks about the thoroughbred horse, uh, horse uh, industry and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Polo, these horses are very well taken care of. They rib, live a very ripe life. And if you actually watch them, there's something called a pony kick, where they'll get in there and they'll actually get involved in the sport. They watch that ball, like if you had a Labrador Retriever or, or whatnot, and we're out there playing with them, they love this. As soon as they're out there, and, and you're riding, they love watching that ball and, and being part of the sport. And they're as much, if not more, uh, the, the athletes on the field as, as the guys and the men and women that are out there today. How long is the game? Well, right now we're talking, we built it uh, as an exhibitional event, but uh, seven and a half minutes, four chuckers. Uh, I think we're going to be doing four chuckers today, but uh, more of an exhibitional style. Hopefully Tarek right. won't get out of control. Uh, you know, you, did you talk to him today? I, I, yes, I talked to Tarek. Is he and showboating? Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. Is he? <laughs> He's the offense. He yeah. always plays offense, right? Well, I don't offense. know. I don't, it depends uh, upon the day. That's his position today. That's why yeah. <laughs> And Debbie is the, the so goalie. How the hell have you Debbie been? is the goalie. <laughs> Debbie is the goalie. Anyway, I'm doing great, but tell me about you. I heard the rumor that you are retiring from well, politics. Well, I don't know, but I wouldn't call it retirement. I mean, I don't have too much out of, uh, out of uh, politics? I am. Why? Yeah, so, well, I thought I mean, you were running for president. Are you kidding me? You are to, you disappointing you me? me? $3 billion? Huh? Are you disappointing me? You're not running for president? No, this is the deal. I mean, I, uh, I term limited myself in the Assembly, term limited myself in the Senate. Um, I, I did give up all outside income when I, when I went into public office. And as a young guy, 30, you know, still relatively young, 36 years of age, I've got to go make some money. I've got to actually you know, go out, hopefully raise a family at some point. Um, and uh, you know, it's been an awesome opportunity, but it's a dirty, nasty business. 
Uh, to, you're attacked every five seconds. You, if you, you know, you try to do the right thing. You try to do the right thing by the people, and just attack nonstop. But it was it was worth it. I had seven elections in eight years. Won every election. Did a lot of really good stuff. Service disabled uh, veteran uh, legislation, veteran legislation, special needs community. We worked hard on environmental issues, animal rights stuff. Um, and, and I fell in love with the, op the ability, and, the, and it's a real treasure of an opportunity to shape public policy. But the pettiness that it takes to consistently be petty uh, and to deal with the bullshit uh, yes. every, you know, is just at some point say, I, maybe there's a simpler way to live life. I Will I run again? That. I don't know. Yes, I don't know. I, I am I very, my, my stress went from about 300% to about 5 I understand. You know? That's why when every president of the United States takes the power of presidency, the, the hair is black and then it comes yeah, out white. Yeah, comes out white. And right? three months later, I can't even imagine white. the yeah. stress at that level. And, and you can never win. You're always second guess and you, you can never win. Hopefully, at the end of the day, um, at any level, you know, folks can who serve in elected office, and I know I can, can wake up in the morning, look themselves in the mirror, and say, you know what, I did the best I possible can. That's the most important the thing that if they pin your consciousness, you fought for your for the rights of the people right. and did the best right. that you could. The best you can. You make yeah. mistakes. Absolutely. We all make mistakes, yeah. you mm -hmm. know? Uh, but you don't dwell on those. You learn from them. Uh, and you wake up every morning trying to do the right thing for the people you represent. That's all you can do. And to hell with the people that attack you. But at some point, maybe it's, you know, you... you so you think that there is like a, of course there is, but I don't know if you can admit it to it, a big, like a big organization that controls who runs or who doesn't run, yeah, who so goes I mean, up. George Washington talked about it. <laughs> George Washington talked about the fact of, uh, you know, the major parties and, and the fact that today, the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, they both suck. I don't care if you're Nancy Pelosi or John Boehner, you don't represent blue collar Americans. If you're a billionaire, great. America works for you. I don't care if it's Obama or George Bush. Absolutely. And, 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 and because you have red carpet treatment because of your the access and the power that you have for your money. And the, the system itself has been corrupted by the major parties. Um, and they set it up to be a monopoly. We, we talk about the fact yes. we don't allow monopolies in, in America. Uh -huh. There ain't a hell of a difference between the Republican Party and, and the Democratic Party. I don't care if the issue is dem uh, 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 education, um, immigration, uh, any any number of, uh, of uh, our trade policy. It, it, our policy in the Democratic and Republican Party is, if you can take one dollar and turn it into two, uh, that's okay with us. Yes, it and doesn't matter. Blue collar gets... people in the middle, working people. I, you can be living in Westchester making a quarter million dollars a year. You're, I hate to break it, you're a working person um, uh, compared to the billionaires and, and beyond that really control and wield the most power in the United States. Of Let's say the one percent, the one percent. I think it's a, even beyond the one percent. Yes, I think we're dealing with a very small group of people that have enormous wealth, enormous access. They're politically active, and they don't give a hell who is president, Republican or Democrat. They're going to maintain that that power, and the rest of us, they, they watch from a, a, above, above yeah. and watch us attacking each other. Tea Party, Occupy Wall Street, yeah. Republican, Democrat, they're laughing. Yeah, they're laughing. <laughs> you guys, you, you're yeah. caught up in these emotional issues, and, and meanwhile, they're running America down the drain. Okay, well, I got to go, because I'm tired. Yes, no, tell me about your personal life, because you've been... Your personal you're, life? Yeah, you're, you're Well, business, shit, when are you doing... Your when, life. When, are, when, are we, <laughs> when are we doing a bachelor option or something? We got to get me married. We gotta, one yeah, of these exactly. Days, right? I heard that, you heart, that your heart today. was taken recently. You know, you're my in love, taken your heart, by you're by by in by love and everything. In love? Yeah, and the, by in the beach, going, going on vacation. <laughs> nice, are you, are nice. You drunk? Yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't drink. Remember no, that? My, <laughs> remember that? I, I fell drink? in love about 12 years ago. That's never going to happen again. So. No, Maybe once. Are you kidding me? But I saw something recently that you in have. In the paper? Fiance. I would not believe any. I, 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 and I, and I said, I, I read about my fiance in Texas. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I told the paper, I said, well, this is the first time I heard about it. I'm very excited. I hope she's uh, uh, Catholic and, and will be a good mother and uh, brunette and uh, blue eyes and athletic. Uh, and um, you know, give me her number when you find her. I, I was just as surprised as. <laughs> Can as run for the about. bachelor party. So. Well, let's. You, you're in charge. So on the private on the private sector, will what you, you be in do? charge of my my bachelor party when it, when it actually happens? Yeah. I think we just have a bachelor party. Yeah. I mean, well, we I can put it on Aladino TV. Marty, is every Aladino TV? my cousin, is get in here, Marty. I already interviewed him. We know him. We know my cousin. You know my cousin. This is my cousin. He's done. Is everything good? Yes. Excellent. Awesome.
Good, good. This is Marty's yeah. party. Right? I know. I, I, Marty, I was I was media partner with him for the for his event of the right. what's the yeah uh, March of Dimes. March of Dimes. Yeah, there March you go. Dimes. Two yeah. years ago. Okay, I got to run. I gotta All right, you gotta go. Good. Tell me anything. God bless. Else. Thanks for being here. Thank you very Love much. Love you, Dad. This and event, where you want to say the last car. word to the people who come to this event? Thanks to the people who come to this event. Literally, you know, we call it the best party of the summer. You're not going to have a better time. So, uh, you know, beautiful people, beautiful horses, awesome, beautiful field, and, and pretty good weather. And uh, don't miss it the next time. We're gonna, today, we're going to play arena-style polo on the grass, so three on three. So you can have a total of six horses plus one man on an umpire. Can you believe that we asked that question, that how many horses are on the team, and nobody could answer that? Well, traditionally, it's, you have to have a horse per chucker. So we're playing four chuckers today. So we, each player is going to have four horses. So we have a total of 12 horses per team. So what is the position? Do they have a name? Yeah, you know, in polo, the number one, which I play, is the most offensive. So my job is to put the ball on the goal. Number two is the middleman, and number three is the big hitter. Number three can hit the ball far. It's usually your best player, usually the pro. And you, there is a goalie, you call some No goalie in goalie. polo. No? The goals are open. They are open. Yes. So compared to the football, you are like the quarterback, in, in my case, I'm actually like the, I'm on the offensive line. The offensive my line. job is to be, stay up front by the goal, so when the, when the pro hits it to me, he, he puts it right by my offside of my horse, I can just put it in the goal. Outstanding. Yeah. So for how long have you been playing polo? I've been playing polo now uh, since I was 16 years old, and even before that, I was horseback riding, doing hunter jumpers, so I've always loved horses, I love, I love animals, and this is an amazing sport. And, the horses love it too. You have a new dog too, Bravo. I have a rescue dog. His name was Bravo. Bravo. Yeah. Bravo. <laughs> Where do you get that name from? From Bravo. <laughs> well, of course, you know, related yeah. to the TV show from The Real Housewives. Okay. But actually, I didn't name him that. It was, uh -huh. We put it on a poll with Perez Hilton, and it was a it was a choice between Bruno or Bravo. So the fans came up with the name Bravo. Oh. So then I went with Bravo. Okay. Yeah. The fans in this case <laughs> they won. <laughs> So tonight, today at the Victory Cup, how many times have you been playing at the Victory Cup? I've been playing the Victory Cup since it got started. Originally, the Victory Cup was in the Washington, D.C. capital region, and it moved around in that area, and then it moved up to New York when Greg came up uh, to New York when he uh, started running in his political office. Um, so it's been a big part of the tradition with the International Polo Tour and the Victory Cup. You know, we've been partners for many, many years, and I love Greg. Greg's a great guy, and uh, he loves the sport, and, and so we have all these common bonds. Uh, in your team, what's the name of your team? Uh, we are the DC Patriots. The DC Patriots. We're, We're gonna playing play against the New York Empire. The New York Empire. So yeah. there is a final, semifinals. This is it. It's it's, it's one invitation. One invitation only. One. And after this game, the game then moves to Texas, Austin, Texas, in October on the 25th. So there'll be a game there, part of the National Polo Tour with the Victory Cup. And then after that, it goes to Louisiana in November. Oh, so yeah. only three games. But this is against the Patriots. This is yes, and then Texas will play against the Texans. Uh, Texas. And then Louisiana, we're going to play against uh, the team from Louisiana. What if you guys lose today? We're not going to lose. We're going to win. <laughs> that's 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 the attitude. That's, that's the, the promise. Attitude. That's the attitude. Win it, in it to win it. In it to win it. In it to win it. <laughs> <laughs> what happened with in it to win it? What happened with that stage of your life? You know, uh, it's we were still for ongoing. You know, I really loved campaigning when I was running for governor and then Congress. Uh, it's very difficult to get on the ballot in Virginia. You know, Newt Gingrich didn't even make the presidential ballot when he ran because he needed 10,000 signatures. So if somebody writes the name wrong or the area code wrong, it's, it's kicked out. So we collected uh, several thousand signatures, but not enough. So you keep going for it, keep going for it. Look, George Bush lost two times. Yeah. So it's, it's not unusual, you know, even in the beginning when you're running in, in your political career, and you learn from that. Yeah, it's a battle, but it's not the war. Right. You're still on it? You still want to reach the governor house? Or yes, I'm still running for Congress right now. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm an independent, okay. running against a Republican and a Democrat. And you know, in today's politics, people are sick of Republicans and Democrats. They're tired of what's happening in Washington. So, you know, people are looking at the independents now. It's not like it used to be where independents had no chance. Yeah. Now you, we have a fighting chance if you're an independent. And for I have government. a couple new projects. I have a, I, my wine is coming back. Okay, that's good. Oasis. Right? Oasis is coming Oasis, back. Yeah. And I have a beer that's coming soon. Same name? I can't say the name ah, yet. Ah, Latino TV is good. It's going to be very much about <laughs> me. I did uh, USA versus England, and I played against Prince Charles and Prince, Prince Harry. Charles. 
Uh, and Prince Charles actually retired on the game for the USA versus England. And in, Prince Charles, in fact, gave me a trophy that day. He said, I'm retiring. I said, no, you're kidding me. And he didn't tell anyone. He retired on our game, which was a real honor to play against the Prince wow. of Wales. That's great. Yeah. That's why it's a real honor to have him here sitting on our VIP table at the Polo Game Victory Cup for Aladino TV. Exclusive interview with Tarek Salahi. Thank you very much, Mr. Salahi. Great to see you, Aladino. Great to see you. It's a pleasure. Pleasure. Cheers. There are going to be eight horses on the field. Wow, it looks like somebody for really each knows. Tracker, though. Each for each tracker, tracker. Because you will, you will have, each person will have a horse to ride and you have four players on each team. So you will actually have eight horses on the field every tracker. Then we go back. We get a fresh horse and another eight horses will come out. So that's 32 horses in total for this game. Ladies and gentlemen, Debbie, Debbie, Debbie Nash. Nash here at Aladino <laughs> TV. Welcome to the Aladino TV, Debbie. It's great to be here on this lovely afternoon. It is beautiful. The polo is, this afternoon is going to be fantastic. What time you guys start playing? We're, we think we're going to start playing uh, very shortly because it looks like there may be some rain in the forecast. So we'll start a little bit earlier. And, uh, make so if the rain lot. comes, there is no way you can play? Well, it gets a little dangerous. Uh, little, yeah. The grass gets slippy. And now, so you, travel, so you travel from Virginia. Yes, we drove up yesterday from Virginia. Where, where you came with the horses? Who brought the horses? Um, there are several horses brought here. Uh, Sergio, in fact, I rode some horses in the Palm Beach polo and of his, and he's bringing some horses for the players. It's a little far for us to bring our horses up just for the one game. So the horses travel with you, or they no, you, you borrow local, the horses? local people have brought local horses people. for us to use. Oh. So we've never been on some of the horses. At, well, we've not been on the horses ever. So it's like driving a new car. Exactly. That's what I was going to to tell you. It, it doesn't feel uncomfortable if you get a horse that doesn't respond to your command? Well, I think they're all trained pretty much the same way, so they know the commands. Um, you know, some horses uh, don't like the same commands, so <laughs> you have to adjust your style. Did you have time previously to adapt or to make sure that to test drive the horse? No, no, no? cold run. Just, you just go get on the horse and go play? That's right. Wow. Have you had experience, any that you can remember that you, you had a really hard time maneuvering the horse? Yeah, sometimes, you know, if they're a little too hot or a little too crazy, it's, it's wise to change and go and get a different one. So on this game, what is your position on the game? Uh, I am the scoring machine. The scoring machine? Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Promise me son not to do the things I He's got a really cool look as a trophy, but we beat New York. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, Hold on, team. 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 Come on. Come on. Up. Up. I hope you're old enough to understand. Son, you don't have to fight to be a man. 